Welcome to Point of View. I'm Pastor Josh Barnes. This is the show where we're unashamed to look at political, social, cultural, and even theological issues from a biblical worldview. We do that because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. And that kind of proves that he was telling the truth when he said that the Bible is true. And that means that we're wrong if whatever we, whatever decision we come to about an issue, if we disagree with the Bible about it. Um, so that's why it's so important to be biblical. And uh, in the vein of proof of biblical things, we have another interview for you from the NRB conference that I was at just a few weeks ago. This is a man named Kevin Fisher, who I didn't even realize he was going to be at NRB. And, and until I, I bumped into him and he started to explain to me what he was doing, I had no idea that this is the same guy whose research I had actually used. Uh, in a previous video that I've made about uh, where the, where Mount Sinai is, I did some biblical archaeological research and found that the Sinai Peninsula, where we assume the mountain Mount Sinai is, is actually not the place where Mount Sinai is. It's, it's crazy. It sounds ridiculous. But Mount Sinai is actually in Arabia. And um, I did some research and this there's uh, back in the 1980s and 90s, a man named Ron Wyatt actually did a, a lot of following the footsteps and the footsteps of the Israelites um, from Egypt. And he found that the actual crossing site for the Israelites was not um, on one side of the Red Sea, but on the other side of the Red Sea. And because, uh, you know, the Red Sea splits into two pieces around the Sinai Peninsula. And uh, he said, no, they, they crossed on that other side of the Red Sea and would have actually gone to Arabia where Mount Sinai would be, which is interesting because in the book of Galatians, it says that Mount Sinai is in Arabia. The same guy, Ron Wyatt, came up with a lot of amazing claims. He claims to have found Noah's Ark, which and the evidence that he gives for that is quite compelling. I've got here um, Kevin Fisher's book. Kevin uh, is the one I ran into in at NRB. He's uh, Ron Wyatt has is, is passed away. Uh, but Kevin has has done a lot of verifying and checking up his research. Um, he has a documentary here, Revealing God's Treasure. He gave me all kinds of, of information, but all of it you can find at arcdiscovery.com. And this is actually where I had been, and I had done some research on arcdiscovery.com before I met uh, years ago. And then I met Kevin Fisher at the creator of arcdiscovery.com at NRB. And that was just so cool to me. So we sat down, I interviewed him, and I want to share that interview with you. And then I'll walk you through some of the stuff, some of the really cool stuff that uh, that he has found and that he's verified. Here is my interview with Mr. Kevin Fisher. Thanks for joining us. I'm Josh Barnes, and I'm here at NRB in Nashville, Tennessee, with Kevin Fisher. And Kevin, uh, I, I discovered your, uh, your website recently. It is arcdiscovery.com. Is That's that right? right? That's right. And Kevin has done some research into Bible archaeology, and he's here to share a little bit of, about what he found. Tell us about arcdiscovery.com and what it's all about. So we showcase, showcase the discoveries of the late Ron Wyatt. He used to live right here in Nashville. He found the remains of Noah's Ark, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Red Sea Crossing, Mount Sinai, and the Ark of the Covenant. I met him in 1984 here in Nashville, and I've been hooked ever since on these discoveries. They are real. I've been overseas 17 times to all of these sites, and it's just amazing stuff, Josh. I tell you, God is bringing this evidence out for the world to see. Wow, that, that, that's really awesome, because I've done some research myself into this, certainly not as much as you have, um, and... Uh, one of the things that really struck me was that uh, journey from uh, to, to Mount Sinai and following that evidence that uh, Ron Wyatt brought out. And, you know, it does appear that he may have made a few a few little mistakes, but the, the general thing that he found seems to be right on. Even um, scholars are coming around now and saying, yeah, no, the Mount Sinai isn't in the Sinai Peninsula. It's really in Arabia. That's right. He first found the Red Sea crossing spot in Nueva, Egypt, which is the east side of the Sinai Peninsula. 
And if you go across the water there, that's Midian, Saudi Arabia. So there at the crossing site, he found chariot wheel remains, chariot wheels in the waters there. That confirmed, you know, hey, you're at the right spot. And they also found a column there that Solomon had erected uh, 400 years after the event. So on the other side of the water there, you have Midian. That's ancient Midian. Moses went to Midian for 40 years. And that's where you find Jabal El Laws. It's the tallest mountain in that region. Herschel Shanks, editor of the Biblical Archaeology Review, stated that is the most likely mountain for Mount Sinai. Mr. White went out there in 1984, risk, risking his life, basically, and found this mountain. It wasn't known to modern man, you could say, but the local Bedouins out there would say, Jabal Musahena, or the Mountain of Moses, is here. They knew it. There's a local tradition. It has a burned, blackened peak up at the top. But previously, in 1977, he found the remains of Noah's Ark. Uh, it contains man-made metal. I personally found two different samples of man-made metal on the Ark, 8% aluminum metal, 1.5% uh, titanium metal. Its exact length is stated in the Bible, 300 Egyptian cu cubits. Moses wrote Genesis. Yeah. So I want to talk, I want to just pause you there because I do want to talk about the Ark in just a moment. Yeah. But if we could um, just back up just a little bit. I have yeah. one question just in my research um, that it appeared that some people claimed that the mountain that Ron Wyatt found, he mistakenly identified as Jabal el Laz, and they claimed that it was actually a mountain nearby called Jabal Makla. Well, it's in ancient times, they would only name the highest peak the Jabal Makla, as we call it today, where, where the Mount Sinai is that we're talking about, is just an extension of that. It's part of the range. Ah. So the tallest mountain is, is Jabal El Laz. This one's slightly lower, but it's on the same mountain range. So Philo said it was the tallest of mountains in that area. And so this is part of that mountain, you could say. <clears throat> but um, it, it's, it's the correct site. It has uh, the Burn Blackened Peak. It has a cave of Elijah. It has a golden calf altar out in the encampment area with uh, apis bulls drawn on the side of these stones. It's just incredible. I was there two years ago. But uh, it's, it's, it's all these things, including Sodom and Gomorrah that Mr. Wyatt found with the brimstone and so forth. It's evidence of God's judgment of man. At the flood, he destroyed the wicked. At Sodom and Gomorrah, he destroyed the wicked. At the Red Sea crossing, he destroyed the wicked. But each time he led his people through to the other side. Yeah. And that's what he's getting ready to do at the end. I, I feel, a lot of you out there feel, we're near the end of time. And God's going to lead us through also. we got to stay close to him. But God's going to bring these things out in a big way at the appropriate time. And he's going to say, hey, look, I judged people in the past. I'm getting ready to judge you. So God has a plan with these. And then also, what about the Ark of the Covenant? Yeah. Mr. White said he found it in a cave in the garden tomb, garden tomb grounds there in Israel, and we used a frequency detector standing back 100 feet from each angle, each direction, and each time the frequency direct detector set to detect gold would point to the same spot where Mr. White said the ark was underground. Mm -hmm. And when we put the detector above that spot, the detector would spin, which means the gold is below. Yeah. And so there's this visual confirmation with this detector that Mr. Wyatt was correct. The ark is there. And that's, so that's part of the is, evidence. That's part so, of the evidence coming so, out. I tell you, Josh. I love this so much because I'm geeking out right now. Because, yes. you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time really looking at this and um, thought it was really cool. And, and to see that you've gone back and you've kind of verified some of this. I do have yes. a couple questions. I want to yes. get to the, to the Noah's Ark stuff because that's something yes. I haven't really covered um, with my audience, but I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to get your take on sure. it. Sure. Um, but let's talk about that Ark of the Covenant. Um, in my recollection, I, I thought that uh, Ron Wyatt had said that he he went back to the chamber where there had been the Ark and where he, he claimed to have seen the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. And that it was gone. So you're saying mm. that it's it's still there? No, it's never been gone. He's never stated it's gone. He has stated it's been cleaned out. When he first got there, there were all these stones and boards in there, and the stones were piled up within 18 inches of the ceiling. And this was sort of a way to cover up all the items. So if someone ever looked in there, they would see nothing and move on. But in his fourth trip to the chamber, all this had been cleaned out by God, basically. And there were four men in there, or angels, 
that spoke to him and said, set up your tripod, film what is about to happen. And they lifted up the mercy seat and they said, reach in and take the Ten Commandments out. The world needs to see them. So he took the Ten Commandments out. They put the mercy seat down and they took the Ten Commandments out of his hands and put them on a shelf, a rock shelf in that cave. And that video that Ron shot of this happening is sitting there on the Ten Commandments. So that when the Ten Commandments come out at the appropriate time, the angel said when the Mark of the Beast law is enforced, the Ten Commandments will come out of the cave. Hmm. So out of the cave will come these Ten Commandments, the videotape of Ron Wyatt, and in the scenario, if you go on our website, arkdiscovery.com, you'll see Jesus was crucified directly above the Ark of the Covenant. The rocks were rent or split, and below the Christ's crucifixion, next to the cross hole, a, a split went down the rock and it was split directly above the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, and Jesus' blood fell on the mercy seat, fulfilling Daniel 9.24 to anoint the most holy. The most holy is the Ark of the Covenant. So this is incredible stuff. So that blood is going to come out as evidence. The Ten Commandments come out. The video of Ron Wyatt come out. And everybody will say, who is that man in the video? What else did he touch? Noah's Ark, Red Sea Crossing, Mount Sinai, Sodom and Gomorrah. So all this stuff is going to be big time world news. And I think it's going to happen this decade, yeah. the way I feel. And that, that's a, a, a fantastic account, which I think is, is fair for us to be skeptical about when we hear sure. something like that. But, but up until now, I hadn't heard of someone who'd gone back and actually did, uh, provided some evidence to verify that. Yeah, that and gold detection. Neat. We had got 35 test results with this gold detection. And each time it confirmed the arc in this same spot. And where it would spin and not spin, we got a, a shape, a rectangular shape, the correct size of the Ark of the wow. Covenant. Wow. Even though it was 35 feet down, it correctly identified the shape so, of the Ark of the so Covenant. So we know at least that there is a, a, a gold arc-shaped object. It's a rectangular <laughs> shape underground putting off a, a strong signal Interesting. where you can get it from 100 feet away, the signal, um, that the Ark is exactly in the spot Mr. White said it was. Wow. So. That's amazing. Lana, let's talk about the other Ark because yes. we don't have a lot of time yeah. for this interview, but I want to get to it. Um, what were your findings on Noah's Ark? There's lots of people who say, you know, it's got to be over here, it's got to be over there. I found the evidence that Ron Wyatt provided about the Durapanar site very compelling. Yes. And I know some people, you know, a lot of experts would disagree. Um, experts, right? Uh, what, what were your findings on that? Well, you know, it is the exact length that's stated in the Bible. It's 300 Egyptian cubits. Moses wrote Genesis. Moses used the Egyptian cubit. So it's 515 feet, that's the exact length. It's a boat shape. It's in the mountains of Ararat. Ararat is an ancient country of Urartu. We stayed in the Urartu Hotel, first time we were out there. Mm. It's still being used, that name Urartu. So it's in the mountains of Urartu. Mount Ararat is across the valley. Mount Ararat is a post-flood volcanic mountain. It came up after the flood. You can't look there for it. And the ark has rib timbers on the sides, like wooden ships have rib timbers. Uh, Mr. White found a deck timber made of wood uh, inside the ark. And like I said, I found man-made uh, metal fittings on the side of the ark, had them tested at Galbraith Labs. It contains 8% aluminum metal, 1.5% titanium metal. Wow. So that's man-made metal on the side of the ark, confirming this is a man-made structure. If you've got man-made metal, hey, this is a man-made site. And in, in uh, Genesis 4, Tubal Cain was an instructor of metal workers in brass and iron. So we have to expect to find metal in the ark, Josh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, I think they even found manganese in the metal, which shows yes. that it was a more advanced society than, you know, than what yes. evolutionists would like to say. Manganese metal, past. yes, yes. Um, so, um, a lot God, of cool stuff. God has a plan, he's gonna bring this stuff out. It's all real, folks. Yeah. Yes. And if all the things, all the accounts of the past are real, and they are, and we can actually find proof of them, and, and we can, then we know the accounts of what's coming in the future are also real. We can I trust wanna, God's word, yes. I want to tell everyone about, uh, about the website. Again, it is, uh, repeat that for me. Arcdiscovery.com. Arcdiscovery.com. Yes. And uh, he's, got a, he's got a video and also an illustrated book, Revealing God's Treasure, that walks through some of these findings. Yes. And, uh, you know, don't take someone else's word for it. Do the research yourself. Check out what he, what uh, Kevin Fisher has uh, for you, and he's provided a lot of research. Um, go ahead and research other, other um, counter, uh, 
arguments to, to things that he's found and, and do your own research and, and uh, come to your own conclusions. But I think that, that you'll find this extremely compelling. And uh, Kevin Fisher, thank you so much for joining hey, us Hey, thanks today. for having me, Josh. Okay, so guys, listen, I think this is really cool. I don't think there's, there's much question at all about Ron Wyatt's findings on Mount Sinai. Even the, the, the best biblical experts are now starting to agree, yes, the Sinai Peninsula, that Mount Sinai is not the correct one. Let me show you a few pictures here. Um, here is the, a picture of the Sinai Peninsula. And you can see that green. Now, if you're lifting on the radio, you just have to listen to me describe it, okay? So um, you can see that green line running across the Sinai Peninsula is tracking, uh, actually tracks the, the route that, that, that Israel took. Now, down at the bottom there, that Sinai Peninsula, they say, is where Mount Sinai is. But Israel, remember, they left Egypt and then they crossed the Red Sea which means they were in the Sinai Peninsula and then they crossed the Red Sea down there at that little dot called Nueva Beach. Here's a, a larger image of that. All of this, all, by the way, all these pictures that I'm getting, you can find on arcdiscovery.com. Pretty cool, isn't it? Um, and there's the, there's the beach, Nueva Beach. And this is where the Israelites would have been uh, trapped. You can see that there's only this tiny little, um, uh, tiny path to get in there. You're, you're going through this um, canyon gorge almost uh, through these mountains. And you can see how God could have blocked the Egyptians right there with, uh, as he said he did, with the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. And all of the Israelites were spread out here on the beach. And then they crossed the Red Sea from this point. And actually at the bottom of the sea there, Ron Wyatt found ch Egyptian chariot wheels and a column marking uh, from probably that looked like it had inscriptions from King Solomon marking this as the crossing site. And then he found in Arabia, this, uh, these couple of things, he found this, which is the, uh, a split rock, which has evidence of water coming from it. Uh, just like Moses, who is supposed to have hit a rock and water poured out in the desert. Here is evidence of that, and there's no reason why water would have been around this rock other than the, the, the biblical account. And then he found a mountain in Arabia that is perfectly matches the description of Mount Sinai. You see the top of the mountain there has a black tip down to the a little bit lower and to the right on your screen. If you're watching on, on TV, you can see a plateau up there. As, as you climb the mountain, there's a plateau, which is where Joshua probably would have waited for Moses as Moses was up in the mountain. In the mountain, there's actually a cave where Moses likely uh, stayed while he received the Ten Commandments. Um, just absolutely fascinating stuff, this this following the the the... Exodus and the Ten Commandments and the discovery of Mount Sinai. That I think there's just no question that he found the correct Mount Sinai. Now, he's also claims to have found Noah's Ark. And I think I'm I'm very I'm fairly confident that this is actually here's a picture of it, and you can kind of see it right there, the shape of an ark. The dimensions are exactly the dimensions described in the Bible, and it's all petrified which means it's turned into stone, which would have happened to wood over time. And it looks like it slid down in a mudslide from, uh, from a higher point in the mountain. But you can see this is in the mountains of Ararat, not in Mount Ararat, in the mountains of Ararat, which is where the Bible says that the ark rested. And it looks as if the ark, uh, you can see up there towards the top of your screen, uh, the mountain is a little bit higher. And you can see how it appears that there may have been uh, in ancient times, uh, a bit of a mudslide that caused the ark to slide down the mountain and maybe was impaled on a rock there. You can see that kind of jutting into the, the shape of the ark. But um, there's cross beams and, and looks like there's several layers in there as they've investigated. This looks very compelling. Now, there are a lot of experts who disagree. I have not spent a lot of time on their arguments, but what arguments I have heard 
uh, don't seem very compelling to me, not nearly as compelling as the evidence for that. You can find out more on arcdiscovery.com. Now, the other things, um, the other, there's one other thing that I thought was very compelling that Ron Wyatt found, and that was the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah site, um, or the site of Sodom or Gomorrah, one of those cities. And uh, this is interesting because the Bible does say that those cities can be seen in the New Testament. They talk about how you can actually go see them today. You can see that they're, they're still just dust and ashes. And here is what Ron Wyatt theorized was uh, the biblical Sodom. And you can see actually where this is all dust and sand and charred burnt stuff, but it still has the general shape of buildings and a city. Here's another picture of another building. There's lots of columns that you can see. There's lots of right angles here, which is why this is, uh, most people do believe this is an ancient city. And in all throughout the city, you find these little holes at, of, it looks like raindrops, but inside of these, you can actually pick them up, break them open, and you will find balls of sulfur. <laughs> sulfur raindrops falling out of the sky, burning an ancient city. This is probably Sodom and Gomorrah. So those are the findings of Ron White that I find very compelling. Now, there are there is one other uh, claim that Ron Wyatt made. Um, that he, by the way, here's, let me show you a couple pictures of Ron White. Here's him on CNN, September 27th, 1991. I was four years old at the time. <laughs> uh, there's Ron Wyatt showing some of his findings. Uh, that's one of his Noah's Ark uh, findings that he, that he's showing, revealing that this is a petrified piece of wood. And uh, then here is another uh, just general picture of him that I found, <laughs> I found on arcdiscovery.com. Uh, but anyway, so there's th that's Ron Wyant. This, these are his findings. Now, there's one finding that I find to be unproven. And this, this is something that Kevin and Fisher and I would disagree agree about. Kevin Fisher is very confident that this is proven. Later on in his life, Ron Wyant found what or claimed to have found the Ark of the Covenant. Not, the, not Noah's Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. You know, the, the um, Indiana Jones the Ark of the Covenant that was that was placed in the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle and in the temple and then was lost at, during the Babylonian captivity. He claimed to have found it. He found it in a chamber uh, under Jerusalem, you know, because Jerusalem is built over layers of layers of, of the city after it's been destroyed. It's just been built on top of it. And so he dug down underneath what he theorized was the actual place of the of the crucifixion which is slightly slightly um, offset from where most people think the, the crucifixion actually took place um, but where he said the crucifixion took place is real close to the garden tomb and he dug down and he found he found a chamber and he said he opened up a box in the chamber and inside was the ark of the covenant and blood had dripped down from the top of the chamber in into the box and onto the Ark of the Covenant. So he claimed that the blood of Jesus when he died actually dripped down onto the Ark of the Covenant. Now this is an amazing claim and and fascinating and uh, and compelling, but um, no evidence was ever produced of this. Um, and when he 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 went back and there were different. Um, you know, he, he said he saw an angel when he went back and the angel told him just to forget it. You can't come back in here. Uh, Kevin Fisher has gone and, and checked it out with actual, um, you know, metal detecting devices. And there is something made out of gold that is the same size of the ark underneath that location it is, is his claim. And if that's true, that is that adds some very compelling evidence to the only claim of Ron Wyatt's that I I had previously been very skeptical about. I'm still skeptical. I, I'm, I don't like to jump onto bandwagons, but it's really cool research and, and you'll enjoy it. And, and, the, and the Lord will, um, I think the Bible will come, come alive to you in these areas. So uh, check it out. You can get this, this book here, Revealing God's Treasure, illustrated with a bunch of pictures of what Kevin Fisher has found uh, following in the footsteps of Ron Wyatt as he uh, does these biblical discoveries. Um, you can find all of that at arcdiscovery.com. 
I highly recommend it. You can also go to thebibleexplained.com where I have done a video on where is the real Mount Sinai and I talk about this exact uh, this exact thing. Um, and we actually may put this video up on the Bible Explained. If you're watching uh, on the Bible Explained, if you're watching this video on the Bible Explained, <clears throat> then just go find my video on uh, right here on this channel on uh, where is the real Mount Sinai. I may make a video on the Bible Explained before too much longer about Noah's Ark and about Sodom and Gomorrah. I haven't done that yet because I haven't done all the research. I've heard a lot of what Ron Wyatt has said. Very compelling. I haven't heard what other experts have said about it. So um, so I'm a little biased at the moment. Uh, but anyway, so, but here's the thing. And, and, and let me just kind of boil it down to this in the last two minutes I have. I think it's really important that Christian people be truthful people, right? Does it matter if that truth is positive or negative, be truthful. I try to do it in a kind way, but be truthful, right? And it's also, I think, really important in order to be truthful people that we don't just rush to conclusions because something sounds good. We accept something and we say, wow, that sounds really good. That might be true. Let me find out if it really is. The first thing we do as Christians, when some new idea comes to us, we should first Go straight to the scripture and say, does this agree with scripture? And then, because we know Jesus died and rose from the dead, and he said the Bible's true, so if you, if you disagree with the Bible, automatically wrong. But then we go, after that, and we say, okay, it agrees with scripture. Is it possible? Maybe, yeah. And, and, and then research what other people have said about it, what, how, what they may have argued against it, or listen to both sides, weigh these things out. I think that would be very helpful, very good. And go check out Kevin Fisher's work, really, because even if you disagree with him, you, you need to listen to his side um, to, to really understand the arguments that he's making. And I think he's, he's really done well. And uh, I tell you what, he had some cool stuff. Uh, he, Ron Wyatt claimed to, see the, uh, to have seen the sword of Goliath in that same chamber. It had been hidden there, he, he believed, by... Uh, by Jeremiah the prophet when he hid the uh, Ark of the Covenant. And he had, so uh, Kevin Fisher had a replica of the sword of Goliath there uh, at, in, at NRB. And he had a replica of the uh, Ark of the Covenant. Some really neat stuff. So I, I, I know you won't be disappointed. Go check out arcdiscovery.com and, uh, and you'll really appreciate that. And do some research. Honestly, if there's one thing that'll open up the Bible to you and really help you understand things better and 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 have a growing love for the scriptures, it's going to be doing study and research on biblical archaeology. I can't recommend that highly enough. Go check that out. Thanks for joining us today on Point of View. We will see you next time.